I always laugh because it dings like when you get into your own room or your own channel. Right. <laughs> so I, I laugh every time. I don't know why. I just still think it's the most charming thing. It's like, ding, I'm home yeah. <laughs> to, my, to my own house. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> Always, always brilliant and beautiful. So, all right. Good afternoon, everybody. And welcome to today's Eat and Greet, where we've got a real cool treat. We've got Tony Howard joining us. And we're going to talk about Out of Balance Planets today. And it's really perfect timing, too, because I've been using and talking about these more in my forecasts in, and in how I'm making decisions about things, even in my practice. And someone said, well, what is that? And I was like, clearly going to make a video. And then even better... We're going to just do a whole interview and talk about it. So <laughs> this is like perfect timing. Tony, thank you so much for being willing to come over. Thank you, Stormy. Thanks for the invite. I'm just thrilled to chat with you. And uh, I love your I love your work. And it's a pleasure to be chatting with you today. Yeah. And we'll talk for a minute here in just a second about Astrology University, because you've got that going on. <laughs> big and beautiful and impressive. And part of this is putting people in front of their potential teachers, right? I don't, I don't know whose teacher you are, but somebody <laughs> looking to learn some astrology. So we want to get them in that direction as well. But first, a little bit of housekeeping, you guys. Welcome. Glad that you're here. Some of you I know are taking your lunch break and we appreciate that. So hopefully we give you something that is genuinely delicious to snack on during lunch. This week, we have also got Tammy Brunt coming on Friday. So make sure you stay tuned to check that out. There are eat and greets you can go back to. There's lots of astrology learning and interviews that have been done. So make sure you check them out. The solstice gifts are still up and available. So feel free to take advantage of them. I'll put them in the description box down below, or you can check the website as well. So Astrology University. You just woke up and said, let me start a university. <laughs> that would happen? Um, actually, I've been working with astrologers for a few years at that point, uh, several professional astrologers, and uh, I had this idea to bring them together under one roof so that their audiences could cross-pollinate, so that ideas could cross-pollinate. That was the original impetus, and I've the domain name Astrology University was open. And so really I started with the domain name and then kind of stepped into it over time. We started out doing regular webinars, uh, like monthly webinars, and then we increased those. Then we started doing longer courses. And then just last year, we launched our, our the beginning of our four-year training program. So it's a full-fledged uh, training program. And the the idea again is, is like you get exposed to many different teachers, many different styles of astrology so that you can find your own voice and, and step into that and uh, feel empowered to do um, readings for folks. Oh man, that's really exciting, especially because in the United States, we're not really governed. So you can kind of just be out <laughs> and about. So it is nice to bring a semblance of good ethics, of yes. knowing where the training came from, all of these kinds of things under, under one roof and feeling confident then when you go see an astrologer, that's pretty. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And our goal is to, is to train our students to feel confident doing readings. So uh, we, we start from the very beginning with, uh, and this is in the four-year training program specifically, but we assign homework and we give feedback and you, you practice is first just with a couple of sentences and then paragraphs and then essays speaking as if you'd be speaking to a client. So you get practice over four years. So by the time the program's over, I mean, our students uh, are, that are just finishing up year one already feel confident, uh, you know, saying they could speak it extemporaneously about the sun, moon, and the senate, for instance, and have plenty to say. Yeah. Oh, that's absolutely beautiful. So if you guys are looking, if you're like, yes, I'm ready to launch out, I'm ready to study. And if you've been practicing for a while, there's something that shifts and changes when you come under someone's eyes. It really just helps to kind of streamline some things, you know, so if this- definitely. Sorry, go ahead. If it's, if it's what you're looking for, I'll definitely make sure they can find the links to those as well. I mean, I know things changed here, just even in my subscribers and how content was coming out when I came under Steven. So things change. Yeah, okay. definitely. I was just talking to a student yesterday who was saying that speaking it out loud, uh, speaking the homework out loud in writing, and then in, we have live Q&A sessions and we have group chats and things. And just, she was just saying, I've been studying astrology for years, but just doing that, that's what pushed me into the, you know, into the next level of confidence. And I feel like I can actually do this now. So that was really great to hear. Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. So I'll, I will make sure the information is down below, but today more specifically, we're going to come into something I think is kind of your passion project and that yes. is 
out of bounds planets, which if you've never heard of that, then just buckle your emotional seatbelts. Cause there's some good stuff coming. We're going to talk about these things and, and how to spot if you've got one, right? Cause that's the thing. It, it adds this little tweak a little bit to the personality, to maybe the way people are going to get things done. So do you want to tell us about this? And how did you, how did you arrive at out of bounds planets? There's so many planets to study. There's so I know, I know. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. There's so much to study. So I was studying with Stephen Forrest in the two thousands in his apprenticeship program. And he started teaching about the out of bounds moon because he did his own research project as he was writing his book, the book of the moon. And he was, it, he, he had gotten a grant and was able to kind of have some fun doing some research. You know, if you know Stephen, he's kind of a workhorse with readings and booked up years in advance. So it was really nice for him to have that break to do some study of his own and creative projects. And he got really interested in the Out of Bounds Moon. And his, his excitement about that was really came through the teaching. And so as I experienced him teaching that, I got really excited. Everybody in the room would get really excited. And, and during one of the Q&As, I said, well, what about... Uh, Mercury, Venus, and Mars, what's that like when those are out of bounds? And he said, you should research that. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so I did. I did. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm the person that's crazy enough to do that. And now I have this massive spreadsheet full of hundreds of charts. And I've just researched tons of biographical material and people's source material. It, and by that, I mean, if they're an author reading their books, if they're a uh, 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 um, musician listening to their music if they're an actor watching their films etc and uh, and I feel like I have a really good grasp of of some of the energetic of the out of bounds um, uh, uh, archetype I'll I'll say Um, and an out of bounds planet is just one that is at a really high it's really at its peak of declination and declination is a different measurement than what you see in the center of your natal wheel so if you're looking at your, uh, at your birth chart and you're looking at that circle and you've got, say your son's at 23 degrees cancer. Um, declination is a different measurement than all those numbers that you see in the center of the wheel. So declination is a measurement of latitude, celestial latitude, whereas the uh, planets in the center of your uh, horoscope wheel are longitude, longitudinal measurements. So, you know, <laughs> the, the non-scientific way, since you guys are watching a video is like, <laughs> longitude is like this and latitude is like this. You know, it's more complicated than that, obviously, but that's a good way to think about it. So when a planet is actually at the same degree of longitude and latitude, basically in the sky, you'll see them right next to each other. A few years ago, um, we had Venus, uh, I forget what the conjunction was, uh, um, maybe it was Venus, Jupiter, but anyway, if you, if you just look, if you're looking in your birth chart and you see a conjunction and then you look up at the sky, those planets aren't necessarily right next to each other, unless they're also, um, what we call parallel in declination. So when you're adding in both measurements, you're, it's like, you're starting to look at the chart more in 3d. Right. Takes it off of the just flat plane Yeah. of trying to imagine that and kind of gives it some depth. Totally. And then it's real easy to find out if you have an out-of-bounds planet. So first, you just have to find your declination grid. Remember, you're not looking at those numbers in the center of the circle. You have to open up your program, and this could be astro.com. You can find it on astro.com. You have to go into their extended chart selection and look for the declination table. Sometimes it'll just say D-E-C-L and a period. I think that's what it says in Solar Fire, for instance. And then that's the set of numbers you're going to look at. And you're looking for any planet that's got a number bigger then 23 degrees and 27 minutes, including 23 degrees and 27 minutes. Sure. And um, that can be north or south declination. So um, it doesn't matter if it's north or south, you're just looking for that number to be 23 degrees, 27, uh, 23 degrees, 27 minutes or greater. And uh, in some of the programs, you'll see that signified as an S and an N for south and north or a plus and a minus. And you can just pretty much ignore those to determine whether the planet's out of bounds. Cool. I'm going to show that just really quickly so oh, people thanks, Stormy. can see what we're talking about. So, so cool. This is the place that you're not looking for that number, <laughs> right? right? Because you can have a planet like my Neptune's at 26 degree, but that doesn't make it out of bounds. Instead, you want to look for this is what the declination table. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Awesome. We have visuals. That's awesome. We have visuals. Yes. <laughs> so you're looking for anything that is greater than 2327. Yeah. And so you've got Mercury. This is a chart with Mercury out of bounds. Yes. And is this you? (laughs) This is me. 
Yay. Oh, I love Mercury out of bounds. Yeah, it's me too. And every time Mercury <laughs> is uh, out of bounds in the sky, I do something prolific. So that's I, awesome. I appreciate that. But this is what you're looking for, um, you guys, as you're studying your charts out there. So just a quick little, so you know what you're looking for. And we have, uh, we, we have one more, uh, we've already had Venus and Mars out of bounds this year. And we have a, one more Mercury out of bounds cycle at the end of this year, which I'm sure you've looked at, um, looked forward to. Yeah. Um, Stormy, do you know about this? I know I'm kind of zipping into different territory, but do you know, um, have you ever heard this old archival talk by Robert Blatchkey where he talks about Mercury being out of bounds the last time Jupiter and Saturn were conjunct? I haven't heard it. I don't know. I, I'm sure I know that you look at that cycle. So I, I don't know if you've brought that in or not, but he has some interesting things to say okay. about, about it. Um, he was kind of suggesting that uh, with Mercury out of bounds in that chart from 2000, that it was speaking to some, how did he phrase it? Uh, it he was pointing to media and uh, misinformation and disinformation and confusing information. And, uh, and uh, boy, was he right about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting. I'll have to definitely check that out. And I'll make sure that that's in the description box for other people to check out as well. Cool. Because I'm sure as we look at <laughs> how this is all playing out, especially going forward, what yeah. it's going to tie back to now as well. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's interesting. Good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, and so we, we, get, we get that again in this next Jupiter-Saturn um, cycle. So it seems like something that we need to really work on collectively and, and we're being challenged to, to come up with solutions on our own without the planets helping us out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Which is so interesting because just on the topic, like I know this is like jumping for a minute, but the um, inclination I have towards Saturn in Aquarius is like, do the research yourself and mm. then give it to the whole, right? And really these platforms like YouTube, they give you a space where these people are not necessarily media journalists and they're going out and just doing the research because they're good researchers of information. And so we get fact checkers that are just the lay person, not right. necessarily in the profession that we gave them. And I think that's fabulous. Just Yeah, fabulous. it's a, it's definitely a blessing and a curse, you know, because <laughs> some people are definitely not doing fact checking and they're presenting themselves on YouTube and other people who aren't kind of doing their own work, so to speak, and are just blindly trusting what they're listening to. You can definitely find some strange rabbit holes on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the internet, my friend. Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's talk maybe first about, so you find out you've got an out of balance planet in, in your chart. And so maybe should we focus on Venus, Mars, and Mercury? What does that, what does sure. that mean? What kind of spice does that bring to your table? Yeah, definitely. Well, one thing I'll say really quickly is that two planets don't go out of bounds, Saturn and Neptune. So if you're wondering why your Saturn or Neptune aren't out of bounds, it's because they, they don't go up quite that high. And that number that we set is, is not random. Um, it's determined by the maximum declination of the sun, which kind of sets the upper limit. So the sun can only go right now um, in this kind of hundred year period can only go as high as about 23 degrees, 26 minutes. And so when we say, uh, when we see a planet with a higher number than that, it's going further than the sun. And that's what kind of gives us some of the meaning as well. So we think of that planet as being outside the jurisdiction of the sun as having a bit more freedom of expression uh, and so when people ask me to pin it down to a word, the word I like to use is freedom. So that planet has more freedom uh, for better or worse. And then my favorite um, word right now is actually just extreme. And it just comes from the fact that the planet, when a planet's that high in its, in its declination, it's at the, the peak um, or valley of its extreme declination. And, and so you see extremity, you see an emphasis, you see um, more. It's kind of like a, a, a turbo button on that planet so that the planet has real gravi gravitas um, or strength of expression. Uh, mm -hmm. You might have experienced that with your own Mercury. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, my God. I started five projects at the same time this last time Mercury went out of bounds and I felt completely comfortable doing it. Wow. And as Mercury came out of, came in bounds, I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> Right. Yes. And it sets the thing, the awareness kind of comes as it comes back under some jurisdiction. And it's like, yeah. you don't have energy for all that. Yeah. Please. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's a great example. Thanks for sharing that story, Stormy, because it really ties in with what I say to, to folks who are 
especially like you who have data out of bounds planets, and then they're also experiencing an out of bounds transit. So maybe that same planet is going out of bounds. I say really use that as a time to nurture your cre creativity and your creative process because you can really mm -hmm. come up with amazing ideas. With, with Mercury out of bounds specifically, it's wonderful for problem solving. If there's something you've been stuck on, watch for when Mercury goes out of bounds and it can be two or three times a year. Um, and uh, you, um, uh, you, you might have access to greater resources for problem solving during that time. One of the charts I love to use with Mercury Out of Bounds is Alan Turing, who's a famous World War II code breaker. And um, you know, that, that kind of says it all. So he had natal Mercury Out of Bounds and he had the ability to look at this crazy, you know, nonsense information and make sense of it with his really powerful natal Mercury. So it's a, it's a, it can, you know, any of the out-of-bounds planets can be real assets, just like any planet in astrology. It's up to you to kind of steer the, steer that energy yourself. And you can definitely get into trouble yeah. with out-of-bounds planets, but, but there's some real gifts to be explored. And then if, if that planet's out of bounds and you're in that cycle, um, I say nurture the creative process. And if you can maybe put off taking action until the planet comes back in bounds and you have time to reflect on what you've, what you've uh, un unleashed. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. So protect your energy, friend. <laughs> when you get out of the jurisdiction of the sun, which I genuinely believe lets us know how much energy capacity we have for something, and then you come back under it and the sun's like, that was crazy, wasn't it? You don't have energy for all of that. Nice try though, right? Yeah, you know? this, so, I like, I love how you said that because the sun is like, I think of the sun as enlightenment. And so it's, the sun's like, let's look at this in the light of day and see what's really up. <laughs> yeah, what you're really capable of. Yeah. Good. Okay, so what happens? So we know, maybe let's talk a little bit more about actually the planets and like, what does it look like in those yeah. characteristics? So where shall we start? Let's just, I, I always start with Venus and does just kind of, we can do Venus. Uh, um, I do Venus, Mars, and Mercury for some reason. It's not in planetary order, <laughs> but there's a reason when I'm teaching that I start with Venus because the, uh, the stories are very um, dramatic and fun. But with e the thing I'll say is that out of bounds is like a modifier. So, it, and it's going to, if we were using that word extreme that I used earlier, um, think of what an extreme Venus would look like. So it's still the planet Venus. It's just an extreme version or an unchecked version of Venus or an untamed or a more free expression of Venus. So with Venus, Venus is the planet of I like. I say Mars is the planet of I want. We can get there in a second. But uh, you can think um, freedom to explore whatever I like, right? And so this is where um, people with Venus out of bounds, there's a whole slew of folks with very, I'll say soap opera like relationship stories that are way above and beyond the normal soap opera. <laughs> sure. And sure. it's, and what you've, what you, the common thread that I've found in the stories I've explored is that that person has a taste for something specific and they don't question it. They don't want to question it. You can't tell them that they can't have it and they just go after it no matter what. Um, so uh, there, there are stories of, um, you know, relationship transgressions, people making really poor judgment calls because they're so free to explore what they want and they don't question it, right. that, that there's, there's no thought process in between. Now, Saturn can intervene here. So if Saturn is square that natal Venus out of bounds, that can create a check and a balance for that person. Um, and interestingly enough, I'm not sure if this is coincidence or not, uh, because I haven't you know, done truly statistical research. I've just looked at hundreds of charts and noticed patterns. And the most dramatic um, Venus out of bounds relationship stories I found, all the folks have Libra rising, which you might, you know, might make kind of sense because that means Venus is ruling the chart. Um, sure. So Venus is kind of steering the direction of that person's life if you have either Taurus rising or Libra rising. And in, in those cases, it really seems to uh, point to a relationship story. That's pretty exciting. So I, this is random. Sorry to jump. Yeah, it's okay. I'm wondering in the out of bounds planets, has your research shown you, if, if any, that if a planet is in a position of exaltation and out of bounds, that it is, is there a greater extremity to that? Because exalted planets are already, they're like, yeah, I'm great. You know, 
And then yeah. you out of bounds. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a great question. I haven't looked at that specifically. I've definitely noticed them show up a lot. Um, but I'm thinking about, you know, one of, one of my favorite set of, of out of bounds charts is a group of folks born, can't remember the year, it's the year that Bjork was born. And they have Venus, Mercury, and Mars all out of bounds. Mm. And in Bjork's case, Bjork has Venus in Scorpio, which is, you know, not exalted. <laughs> and, and yet um, it really shows up as, a, a, um, um, you know, intense off the charts creativity in her case, right? So she's, she's got some serious creative gifts and um, so I don't, while I think that a uh, planet being exalted could definitely uh, maybe increase the gifts, uh, I don't think that a planet being in detriment or fall is going to decrease them either. And, and I've definitely seen examples that, that counter that. So there is still something that's conveyed through the planet being out of bounds that kind of just opens it wide up somehow. Sure. Sure. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, I do have some, I do have some chart examples that we, if we get time, I can kind of look at some specifics here. I'm, I'm already thinking of um, Tiger Woods. I could say a couple of things about Mars, you know, Venus, well, before I get there, Venus out of bounds can also, a, a great place to look for that expression in a person's life, if they're an artist, is, is, is look at their creative output and their creative gifts, because they might have some serious gifts there in that way. So it's not always just relationship stories, it can be um, story related to your personal creativity. Uh, and, of, and of course, you know, look at the house placement. You know, if Venus is in the fourth house, you're gonna see that story come out at home. If Venus is in the 10th house, you might see it show up in your area of career or life mission. And um, with Mars out of bounds, you know, it's the same thing. We're seeing an extreme expression of Mars. So with Mars out of bounds, when I started doing my research, I was like a lot of folks, I went right to this idea that Mars is the god of war and, and this research actually, actually helped me correct that perspective. I don't go there first anymore because what I saw more, if you just look at a list of people with Mars out of bounds, you see innovation, you see people who started something, you see people who were first at something. Um, and there definitely are some crazy Agro Mars out of bounds stories, but they're not the they're not the a predominant story. If that makes sense, and so I was really excited to see this really positive creative expression with Mars out of bounds. Um, Tiger Woods has Mars out of bounds, and in his life, you can see the you know the the light and the shadow. Of his Mars sure. out of bounds definitely got him into some trouble, <laughs> but, yeah. but 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 his Mars, you know, he was he's the first at so many things. I mean, there's this huge list of firsts, and. Um, uh, also can correlate with somebody who's like the first and the youngest at something. And he was, he was that as well. So there's, there's a lot of great um, first stories. You also see with Mars out of bounds, this beautiful thread of people who fight to defend the underdog. Mm. And they, they use that Mars as a, as a warrior to fight for others in a beautiful way. Some beautiful, beautiful stories. Um, I'm thinking of um, the host of democracy now, um, Amy Goodman, she has oh, Mars, Mars out of bounds. Um, and uh, anyway, there's just a whole, whole slew of, of, of folks who have uh, Mars out of bounds who've done really amazing uh, things with that energy. Um, then with Mercury out of bounds, you know, an extreme expression of Mercury is going to be like, um, we were talking about Alan Turing, the code breaker. Um, another example I really love is Cab Calloway, because it teaches us something about Mercury that we don't talk about a lot. When I was researching Mercury out of bounds, I thought, okay, we're gonna see people who were the first person to write a you know, crazy novel that was about something wild and, and off the charts. And I didn't find that. And then I remembered Mercury doesn't start things, Mars starts things. Right. Um, and so strangely enough, you find a lot of um, fashion designers who have Mars out of bounds because it's a very competitive field and it's, and you have to be innovative um, and, uh, but, and, and not Venus out of bounds, like you might think. And then with Mercury, I thought it would be writers who were the first at a lot of things and it didn't work out like that. Um, Mercury mimics really well. Mercury takes something and, and um, mm -hmm. riffs on a theme. Mercury's really great at improvisation. And Cab Calloway had um, a scat singer from the, um, 
from the uh, 30s and 40s had a, a big band leader had Mercury Out of Bounds and was really famous for uh, kind of putting scat singing on the map to a, a large group of people. Now, Cal Cab Calloway didn't invent scat singing. Right. Um, and, uh, and, and as far as I could trace it back, because it's a pretty hard story to trace back because this is something that originated you know, verbally in the culture, but um, the earliest person I could find credited with originating that type of singing did have Mars out of bounds. So that was pretty cool. Um, but Cab Calloway has Mercury out of bounds and he took what that fellow did and riffed on a theme and made it even bigger and better. Yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's the thing I was thinking um, in just what you're talking about is that it's not always, it doesn't sound anyways, that an out of bounds planet has to do something new, but they can do something new within the realms of what was already there, but it like pushes it. Yeah. You know, it, and with the Mars. Push, yeah, pushing the boundary, pushing the edges, pushing yeah. the envelope. Yeah. Well, and in, in Mars, like thinking about the case of, of Tiger Woods, you know, not that there haven't been any black golfers, but he started something in a way that in that field and in that sport. Yeah. He was the first youngest black, blah, blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Right. Yep, exactly. Was, like, so I think that's, I'm just, I think thinking about it in my own head now that it doesn't have to be without a balance that something new is being started. It's just yeah. being started in something that was already there. Or that person's innovating in a way that hasn't been done before. I mean, yeah. like think about fashion designers. That's it's not like that's a new thing, <laughs> but, in, <laughs> but, but in order to succeed in that film, I'm mean, sorry, in that, in that, um, in that arena, you have to sometimes be on the cutting edge of, you know, whatever's fresh and funky and new. And then of course, I, I really think it's not an accident that you find a lot of fashion designers with Mars Out of Bounds because it's such a competitive field, sure. you know, and you do find that with Mars Out of Bounds that people are very successful in a competitive field. So sure. that's the best, that's, best expression of Mars. He's like, let me, yeah. let me, let me energize this area and maybe win at something while I'm doing it. Yes. So out of bounds, like studying planets that are out of bounds, which, you know, there's an astrologer out there who uh, refers to out of bounds. He doesn't use the phrase out of bounds. He says uh, Mercury max or Venus max or Mars max. And I almost wish that he had come up with that phrase first. Cause I like it a little better because um, I think we overdo the weirdness with out of bounds planets. They're not. I don't. They're not necessarily weird. Um, they can be. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> um, but you find plenty of people with out of bounds planets that you wouldn't describe using that word. And but you might say innovative, or you might say the first, or you might say really intense or extreme version of that. Um, you know. I, uh, yeah. So I think that um, thinking about an out of bounds planet will can actually teach you something about. The meaning of that planet because if it's a extreme version of venus then it should be really obvious what venus is about right sure sure yeah. i'm wondering too i was thinking about with venus if it's if it's venus max right in yeah. whatever housing it's placed into just that financial piece is this like i'm gonna yes. do and buy and purchase what i want and or you know maybe venus pisces out of bounds and i'm gonna just give you my money Oh, I'm so glad you went there, Stormy, because I have a couple of great examples for that. Um, one is uh, um, Liberace, who had Venus out of bounds. And, you know, I say out of bounds can kind of show an unchecked desire for the things that we want when Venus is out of bounds. And uh, um, Liberace is famous for this saying he once said where he said, um, and if you if you know him or remember, he used to wear these huge rings on all of his fingers. And uh, he said, people ask how I can play with all those rings. And I, I and I reply very well, thank you. <laughs> so like, I'm good. Yeah. He, and he, he had an unchecked desire for jewelry and, and furs and, and luxury items and, and way, way over the top of what a normal person would, um, would, uh, would do. Uh, another person who had that same expression is Josephine Baker, who was a um, really important figure from 20th century Western history. Uh, she crossed many cultural divides in her life. She was a performer who rose to prominence in the 20s after moving to Paris from St. Louis, where she, she left St. Louis, where some violent race riots were happening. Um, and that compelled her to seek safer ground. And she found that in Paris and was welcome with open arms. 
and became eventually the, the world's first female black megastar. So pretty amazing story there. Um, she had nicknames like the Black Pearl and the Black Venus. And in that you can really see the Venus out of bounds kind of um, speaking loud and clear. Now she also had Mars out of bounds. So she had two planets and she used to walk the streets of Paris with her pet cheetah on a leash. And I just love that image for uh, someone with Venus and Mars out of bounds. <laughs> right, she's like, not, not only am I black, but I have this cheetah, so. Right. <laughs> There's just yeah. a lot happening for me right now. She's just putting it out. She's like living large and in charge <laughs> in Paris. And she's like, you know what? This is going really well for me. I want to live in a fancy French chateau. And right. eventually she did, she never stopped. Whatever she wanted, she kept uh, going for it, even in, when, uh, in, in cases where it uh, led to some harm in her relationships and uh, in one of her marriages where her husband was asking her to kind of put the brakes on. And she was like, I'm not putting the brakes on for you or anyone. And, and then uh, that, that actually led to the end of their, their marriage. But, sure. um, but yeah, that's this unchecked desire for, um, for luxury items could definitely be a thing with, with Venus, um, but it could be anything that you like. Remember Venus is what you like. And so it could be anything that you, you know, if you like chocolate and you have Venus out of bounds, you probably like, you're like a little chocolate is good. Why not a lot? I had all the chocolate. Right? <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. And I think it's so interesting that you point out too, with these out of bounds planets, like they just don't think twice and there's no real talking your out of bounds placement yeah. into submission until truly yeah. Saturn shows up and is like, yeah. pump some breaks. Cause I know, <laughs> I know when it comes to information or a plan, my husband's like, well, what if it's just this? And I'm like, what if it's not? And it is a gut <laughs> level reaction yeah. to information. You, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's, I think it's brilliant you point that out because there's just, it doesn't seem like there's any convincing to just go the other way. Yeah. It's, it's pretty hard to convince somebody um, with, with an out of bounds planets to, 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 to change direction. It's like, you have to find it yourself. You have to mm -hmm. find that inside yourself. And even then, you know, when Saturn is kind of putting the brick wall in front of you, it's like the out of bounds planet still wants what it wants. Mm -hmm. It's just gonna maybe throw a temper tantrum or <laughs> complain. <laughs> it, or maybe wait. mature, hopefully mature. That could be. Yes, it. yes, it could be for sure. And Or wait for Saturn to move on. <laughs> I can wait you out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. how does this change or how do you use it um, when we're looking at it, not just in the out of bounds in the natal chart, but in transit? Because I know as I talk about it in the horoscopes, when planets go out of bounds, I really encourage people to just go ahead and go out of bounds. If you are looking to advertise yourself when Venus or Mercury are out of bounds, maybe advertise to that group you didn't quite think of. Mm, I love that. I love that. Yeah. And I love that advice. I think it's great advice. Um, I, I encourage people to do the same thing. Um, I do have this thing I say about uh, checks and balances. And um, this is especially for somebody who has an eight a lot of bounds planet. But the story I tell is about somebody who doesn't, who during a, a Mars out of bounds period got what she later described as a crazy idea. Um, and by that, she just meant it was uncharacteristic of her and and, it, and, and reflecting on it afterwards, it didn't seem like logical or, um, or even something that she could actually pull off. So um, she had this idea uh, to um, um, move her whole family into uh, uh, an RV and travel around, which kind of, you know, sounds fun. Um, but this is a, a family with a small child and um, really, you know, luckily she, had the foresight to take a short trip first <laughs> with their family. Sure, right, try it out. <laughs> and th they live in a, a house where they, they each kind of have their own space where they can, you know, they come together as a family and they can go back to their own space, right? And yeah. so when she got everybody together in that small space, She's like, this is fun for about 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we're not gonna do the mini house living. But she is an Aries and Mars was out of bounds and she had already, you know, she doesn't wait. She gets the idea and she's already doing it, right? So she had already started selling off some of their furniture and paring down their house stuff. And then Mars came back in bounds and she was like, what was I thinking? Like, that's not gonna work. And luckily they hadn't, you know, sold everything so she could get, sure. get some stuff back and put it back together. And at the, at the end of the day, it was kind of a nice, um, you know, way of simplifying and paring down what was most sure. meaningful to them, you know?
Yeah. So, oh gosh, that's what I was just thinking. So maybe in her own whacked out way, she <laughs> actually pioneered the simplification of her yes. own life. That's maybe what was trying to come into her life. But she, right. you know what I mean? I don't know. Yes. Things come through all the time. And I'm like, this has got to be divine energy about fill in the blank. And it's yes. not, it's about this whole other thing. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I guess the advice, the only, the only advice I give for people to, you know, reel themselves back in. And it sounds like obvious, but it's, if the action that you're going to take under an out of bounds transit is going to cause harm to yourself or someone else, you know, don't do it. The problem is that the people with out of bounds planets who do those actions, those kinds of actions, again, they don't have that natural check and balance. So they don't even really think of it as causing harm to themselves or the other person. They just think, sure. I want that thing. I'm going to go after it. And um, so if I'm doing reading for somebody with out of bounds planets, I'll say, um, it's not a bad idea to have your little check and balance team, you know, have a couple of close friends, maybe who don't have out of bounds planets. <laughs> and, and you can say, hey, I have this idea that I'm not so sure about. What do you, what do you think? Mm -hmm. And, um, and, you know, uh, and, and be open to listening to your friend's feedback. I think that there's a, it's a really fine line here though, because you, if you're an out of bounds person, you've got a creative gift to give the world and you don't want to restrain that. Like the whole point of you having an out of bounds planet is to have that part of you unrestrained. So you don't want, you know, if your friend is just like, I think that's kind of weird. I don't think you should do it. Um, don't listen to your friend. <laughs> but if your friend says, that seems like that's going to cause the other person harm. Right. That's something to, to listen to. Or are you sure you're going to be able to get through that experience unscathed yourself? You know, um, is this, is this really going to be good for you? That's the kind of feedback you want to listen to. Yeah, absolutely. When my like projecting was going on, my husband's like, yeah, I mean, how are you going to do all of those things? And I'm like, what do you mean by pure <laughs> magic? Obviously, you know, but then it's like, well, wait a minute. Okay. I think he's saying, how am I going to do all these things? Right. right. It's just very practical. Very so you practical. Have <laughs> and, and if an Aries tells you to pause. You better pay attention. <laughs> right? I love it. I love it. Yeah, that's awesome. So any other kind of tips or tricks? Actually, I'm going to just ask this question because maybe you said it and I didn't hear it, but does Saturn go out of bounds? It doesn't, right? Saturn no, and no. Don't. It doesn't. Saturn and Neptune don't. And there's a really fun saying, and I wish I knew who, who initially said it so that I could give them credit. But um, there's a saying that goes around in people who study declination that uh, Saturn doesn't go out of bounds because it doesn't want to. Thank you very much. And uh, Neptune doesn't go out of bounds because none of us could handle it. <laughs> oh, my God. oh my God. Right. We'd all be fairies or something else. We have to be, that'd be the only way to survive it. That's interesting though, that Saturn, how, how, how much into the declination does Saturn get? How high does he get to go? About 22 and some change. So like 22 and a half or so. I'm, and it's, I've only looked I've actually nerded out on this and I've looked at the last 200 years of Saturn just to see if I could find what the peak was because I couldn't find that written down somewhere. Um, and uh, I just, I didn't geek out enough to go back hundreds of years so I could, could actually see. Because what you find with some of the planets like Pluto is that, you know, in this hundred year period, it might get out of bounds, you know, um, once or twice for some amount of time. And then for a long period, it won't get that high or um there's what you know pluto has a um elliptical orbit so there's there's a lot of variance in what pluto does uh in from you know 100 year to 100 year period uh and i i, I think that because saturn's orbit's not like that it's probably pretty safe to say it's 22 and some change but somebody out there who knows somebody out there might actually know the answer um but stormy i think that's really interesting because i've thought about this a lot and I, you know, d this out of bounds concept is relatively new. We've been using it since the eighties, uh, a woman named Kate Bear, um, KT is her first name. Um, just the letter K and the letter T, uh, Kate Bear. And um, she wrote a little booklet about it and got people thinking about it and starting to use it. We've been looking at declination for a lot longer, but this concept of out of bounds is relatively new. And she was relating it to the sun, but I wonder if it has something to do with Saturn as well. Because the way we describe um, 
out of bounds planets sometimes is sort of like outside the law or outside the limits of restraint. And that sounds more like Saturn than the sun to me, right? Like if we say, if we say restraint or the law or the limits, we, limits is like a Saturn word, right? It's not a sun word. Um, sure. But I see yeah. it definitely both ways. Because right. I, 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 the vision that I have anyways, is even having Saturn not being able to suppress or surpass the sun, right. I think is a very big indicator to us yeah. of general, just life energy. Can you mm. in a very life way sustain this? Because that is really the bounds. Yeah. I think. That's right. a great, well said. I think that's a great point. Yeah. yeah. So that's, yeah. I, so I just wondered, I was like, God, does Saturn ever get above the sun? Cause that'd be real interesting there. Mm -mm. Nope. Yeah. Well, no. probably good for us too then. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Jupiter does, but only barely. Um, Jupiter's the one that kind of just only barely squeaks out of bounds. Um, and I've only done a small amount of research on that, but um so I don't even know if I want to say it or not. <laughs> well, I just say it since I started. But <laughs> it, the the first thing I noticed were these some of these some court cases mm -hmm. um, where the 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 uh, the general public basically thought, "What was that judge thinking?" Oh. Um, and that they're, they're just controversial court cases. So um, when I get some time, it's something I want to look into more. Um, look into more of those kind of court cases and see if. Jupiter was out of bounds in more of them. Yeah, you know what would be interesting? I'm just thinking about it as you say that. Um, I would wonder where where is Jupiter in his declination during the witch trials, right? Good, when, good like, question. Good question. Like, <laughs> like this driving thought of like, this has got to be right. And, and right. how, you know, anyway, we could pick all these different points in history. Oh, and like it's so fun. Big thoughts and stuff like that. So that's so interesting. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. I do have one question down here is um, what about the moon out of bounds? And it goes out of bounds more than the rest of them. It does. Yeah. Moon out of bounds. Moon will go out of bounds often over a nine year period. And interesting thing about the moon cycle that's different from all the others is then for the next nine year period, it won't go out of bounds at all. Mm -hmm. So pretty fascinating. So you'll actually have a whole generational subset of folks where you'll find a lot of moon out of bounds people and then another generation where the moon is never out of bounds. Now in that generation, you could have Mercury, Venus, or Mars out of bounds or Jupiter, potentially Pluto, or even Uranus, um, but not, not the moon. The yeah, moon I, I, I don't know if we could handle that. I, don't know. I know, I know, right? You, like it's like the universe built its own checks and balances at an emotional level. Because like, I don't know, we need some of these people to be inbounds. Because so, yeah, somebody's got to hold down the fort. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah, somebody's got to hold down the fort. So um, with uh, moon out of bounds, it's no different than the other planets being out of bounds. So it's going to emphasize whatever the moon represents is one way to think about it. And as you might know, that can really vary from chart to chart with the moon right? Moon in Aries, very different from moon in Pisces, right? Very, very different set of, of, of circumstances and, and expressions. And um, um, so, you know, one of the things I found um, with moon out of bounds in uh, the charts of musicians is it correlates with musicians who make a really deep emotional connection with their audience. And so it can create this specific type of rabid fan who's like made it's not just that they like the music or that there's some aesthetic that they're into. It's that there's an emotional, there's a heart connection with that, with that singer. And those people are devoted to that musician. So that's, that's a pretty interesting expression that I really love about Moon Out of Bounds. And I, I don't know if we've had a chance to look at it, but is that, um, is that something with Elvis or Prince or any of the bigs that you've noticed? Um, I'm, I'm fairly certain. Um, so off the top of my head, Billie Holiday, and uh, there's this singer called um, Jeff Buckley. Uh, and interestingly, uh, if you know the Buckley story, they're, they're, they're not super well known, um, Jeff Buckley and Tim Buckley, but they're, they're a, a father and son. Um, they were kind of estranged, so they didn't have a good relationship in part because the father died young and the son also died young. They've got very similar parallel stories. They have a similar type of connection with their musical audience and both off the charts create creative um, souls who were really emotionally dialed into their music. They were famous for 
having temper tantrums on stage <laughs> if people didn't get what they were doing and they would just walk off the stage and that kind of thing. Um, Prince does not have any out of bounds planets. Um, I actually happen to have his chart right here for some oh, reason. Brilliant. For some reason, I was just looking at it. Um, so yeah, he doesn't have any out of bounds planets. And you know, the thing about Prince though, Stormy is, um, this is a great example chart because, uh, you know, Prince was very popular. He was really popular artist, right? And, right. Um, you know, I'm not saying that all out of bounds people aren't like mainstream, but when you see the mainstream as kind of an archetype, um, it's not as common for those folks to have out of bounds planets. Um, and in Prince's case, you know, we want to kind of look at his uh, Uranus um, because Prince definitely was an innovator. He definitely kind of broke a lot of the rules around his presentation. Uh, and he has Mercury, uh, I'm sorry, he has Venus square Uranus. And this takes us to a really important point when we talk about out-of-bounds planets, which is uh, when you start learning about what an out-of-bounds planet is, and then you're doing your own research, it's pretty common to think of charts that have, um, think you, you'll think, oh, I wonder if Prince has an out-of-bounds planet. And if you're wrong, nine times out of 10, that person will have a strong Uranus aspect either to the moon or one of the inner planets. Mm -hmm. And this is a great, this is a great example. Yeah. Oh, this is fabulous. So so much to think about just even yes. in the charts of, of people we know, or you can just pull up charts really and look at their declinations and kind of look and see how they move and mode and, and operate. Right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I mean, Prince is, uh, one of those charts that's also a great embodiment of Pluto and Leo, albeit, I mean, it's at 29 degrees, so critical degree. So kind of the the last gasp of that, um, that specific type of pop star with that, you know, massive Leo presence, you know, representing the, the end of that generation. Sure. Now, if somebody, uh, we're going to wrap this up, I promise, but I just want to <laughs> if somebody has, let's say they've got an outer balance planet and it is making a connection with Neptune. Do you think that this changes? Like almost, I guess the thought I'm thinking is like, they think it's the best thing ever. It's connected to Neptune and it is delusional, mm -hmm. but they don't think so. Because I think that's definitely a potential. Um, with one caveat, really interesting thing to think about with an uh, out-of-bounds planet is that because it's at its peak of dec declination, the unless the other planet is at that exact same degree um, and minute, or within uh, really like a 15 or 25 minutes of arc. So really tiny, tiny orb. So if, unless the other planet is, is that close in declination, the aspect is not as tight as you would think. Okay. Yeah. So that, that you can, you can think about the aspect as being a little bit weaker, although it is true that if the aspect, you know, if it's Saturn, you will see more checks and balances. And um, I had that idea and then I gave this presentation at, um, UAC and an astrologer in the audience who'd been studying out of bounds planets herself, who's an old time astrologer said, can I have the mic? And I was like, oh boy, here we go. She's going to just <laughs> rip me to shreds. And she pulled up, she took the mic and she said, first thing I want to say is this guy knows exactly what he's talking about. I was like, oh, please take the Girl, mic. Yes, say more, say more, please. Yes. <laughs> no, but she just, she just confirmed that idea about Saturn in her own research. I was like, okay, that's cool. That's, it's really nice when you have an idea and other astrologers without talking to them or corroborating that same idea. So it, sure. it definitely validates it. But I think that you could say that stormy with Neptune, you could say it, you know, with, with any aspect, you know, out of bounds doesn't change the planet or the aspect in a way that makes it unrecognizable. It's still Venus square Neptune, for instance, if that's what we're talking about. Um, it's just a, a, a more extreme or unchecked expression of Venus. And if it's so if you're going down that route and you're thinking about the Venus Neptune aspect and the kind of problems that can represent, and then you're adding extreme to it, okay. uh, you, you see where this is going. <laughs> yeah, it could just be extreme. It could be, yes, for sure. You know, one thing I just want to say, point to, because you asked me the question earlier and I, I forgot to speak to it, but you were asking how I work with with it as a timing technique. And um, we did we did, did, did give people some advice, but, um, I, you know, just 
logistically, I, I always look at a year ahead to see when the planets are going out of bounds. I mark those dates on my calendar with mm -hmm. Mercury out of bounds myself. I schedule writing time. I schedule thinking time. Um, I schedule, you know, creative, you know, think myself out of my problem time. <laughs> 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 and, and with Venus time, I'm, I'm scheduling creative time. Um, that's how I work with Venus myself. Um, uh, and then, and then with Mars, it's, Mars out of bounds is, is go time. It can be if you've got a project that you're working on like that. Yeah, brilliant. Those are good uses. So hopefully you guys were able to breathe those in. Look and see if you have some out of bounds planets and watch for the timing. We're going to see Mercury out of bounds again in December. So yeah. get, get prepared and set for that. I am feeling much more grounded and ready for that level of interaction with an out of bounds energy. So yeah, we have enough going on this year that the universe was kind to us and they were, they left us this period between now and then where the planets aren't going out of bounds and boy, yeah. that's a blessing <laughs> because there's a lot of other stuff going on. Yeah. I, and actually, I think it's so interesting because looking back into what was it May when Mercury and mm. Venus were out of bounds, Yeah, that was so interesting for people to need to find new sources of income. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, right. great. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Look outside of their normal sphere. So, yeah. and Stormy, that's a great example too, because, you know, you could just focus on the big and we do, and for good reason, focus on the, the big, slow outer planet transits. But if you use this technique and bring it in, it's just going to add up this extra layer and this nuance that can get really spe more specific about some of the details. So I just love it. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for coming to talk to us today. I know you're doing your things, you're moving, you're, you've got yeah. this going and you still <laughs> yeah. made time to come. So I super appreciate that. Oh, it and, was my uh, pleasure. Hopefully you'll, you'll be back and we'll talk about more things. Maybe we come back and talk about Saturn Uranus square. Ooh, I love that one. I love yeah. that one. That's going to yes. be a good one. Yes. That's going to be a good one. So we'll definitely have to have you back. So thank okay. you guys for joining in coming. Hopefully we gave you something that was absolutely worth listening to and listening back to so you can eat it up. And we will see you guys um, at the end of the week for another eat and greet. So thanks, Tony. Thank you so much, Stormy. And take care, everybody. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.